Can I please introduce the filmmaker here, Tony Ayres of The Home Song Stories. Thank you. Tony, this is a story that is very close to your heart. Yeah, the film is based on um, a year in my life when I was 11 years old and it's, yeah, so it is a very personal story but hopefully it can speak to other people as well. That's why I'm here. You're going to enjoy the film and Joan Chen is just breathtaking in it. She plays Tony's mother. We'll see you in the Q&A after the film. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Rose is a glamorous nightclub singer in 1960s Shanghai. She meets Sailor Bill and hoping for a better life, she takes her children to Australia to marry him. But she leaves him just a week later. For the next seven years, we drifted from place to place and from uncle to uncle. The real distress his mother's lifestyle caused writer-director Tony Ayres is shown through the eyes of 11-year-old Tom. When Rose runs out of uncles, she returns to husband Bill. Hello, Uncle Bill. Not uncle. Father. But is soon tempted by new arrival, Joe. Nice to see you, Rose. Nice to see you, Joe. The younger man briefly provides a sense of family. But they're ripped apart when the depressed Rose accuses her teenage daughter May of having an affair with him. It is not what you call a sympathetic character. And you just have to really bravely embrace and defend her. It was very haunting. Air's powerful drama about immigration, mental illness and isolation is so beautifully shot that he's being compared to Wong Kar Wai. I gather you're very proud of this film, but how do you think your mother would feel about this film? Because it's like opening her diary, yeah, almost, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Probably the key story in the film is it's about a boy falling out of love with his mother. You know, like it's about a boy growing alienated from his mother. And I, I would hope that she would understand that and see that um, the, the film is a kind of tortured love letter in its own way. I thought this was perhaps the best performance that I've ever seen from Joan Chen. How did you get her to go to those depths? Well, I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but the role is a, a bit of a, a, a dream role for an actress, really, because you, you have to kind of... She had to be sexy, she had to be charming, she had to be mad, she had to be seductive, she had to be completely irrational. You, I mean, you, you kind of loved her and you hated her, and so <laughs> she had to use all her tricks, as she said. <laughs> Your sister is still around. She read the script. She told you stories that you didn't know about as well, didn't she? Yeah, I was, I was 11 and there were big holes in what I knew. So you found out that some of the events that your mother believed happened, for example, the affair between her and Uncle Joe, didn't actually happen and that was part Absolutely of her condition. Not. Memories of homes and families become more Thank you, Ma. Memories are gone, okay. She was terrified of losing her looks. She was terrified of being usurped by her daughter. She was terrified of her daughter making the same mistakes that she'd made. I think our mother's relationship to men was very problematic because on one hand, she needed men to survive because she was, you know, like she was a migrant woman with only her looks. She, hadn't, she couldn't read or write. She, she had no other skills other than you know, her, her beauty. And uh, at, on the other hand, I think she also found it deeply humiliated that she needed that. So I'm Chinese American and I, I could relate to so much of the film, even though I've never been to Australia because of a lot of the elements of, of just Chinese and, and Asian diaspora, such as, you know, every time your family moved to a new place, your mother would automatically go and try and find all the other Chinese people. And, and I actually follow a lot of American film and literature. And there's a particular urgency for, for speaking that story of, of the Asian diaspora, especially in, in books and movies, because you don't really see it, you know, in blockbuster films or mainstream media. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's proudly part of where the film comes from. You like? Sugar cane. Very juicy. 
he showed also um, Australian um, immigration policies and racism. And I know that this movie was in the 70s and 60s, but it's not dated, is it? People try to, try to avoid uh, seeming racist, expressing racism, but I, I do think that Australia has a, 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 a deeper discomfort, which is being a predominantly white-identified country in an Asian geographic region, and, and, and a country that hasn't um, resolved its um, relationship to its original uh, occupants, you know, the, the Aboriginal people. Get out of here, you Chinese! Huh. Haven't you got anything to say for yourself? I know you can understand me! One of the things in the film was you had to find a character, obviously, to play you. <laughs> And, and you found that in a young amateur. For a Chinese family, the idea of acting in a film isn't a high status thing. You know, they, they just want their children to be doctors or lawyers or engineers. And so it was really tough getting kids to audition for us. The producer, after fielding showbiz mums all day, gets this voice from this little, little Chinese boy saying, oh, I hear you're looking for someone with no experience. And, <laughs> and, and it was Joel. Jade Warrior, your Jade Sword means nothing against my deadly fans. The dream sequences that the little boy had, I thought they were fantastic. I guess they were intended to, to show that in his fantasy world at least, the little boy felt empowered and able to act upon the world, whereas in the real world he wasn't able to. <laughs> I don't want to go to Hong Kong. You shut up. You go to Hong Kong. I hate you. Stop Do you think you have fallen no back in love with your mother through making this film? Well, I've fallen back in love with Joan Chen. <laughs> I wish she was my mother. <laughs> um, I I think that we've been forced to quite publicly kind of deal with my emotional responses to her. I I, I sort of you know I f I feel the c compassion and love for her, which I. I I didn't, probably for most of my adult life, I, I sort of felt like that little boy felt. I felt frozen inside. Thank you for sharing your home song stories with us. Can I please thank the filmmaker here, Tony Ayres. I know you're not mean to say bad things about your mother. Your mother always want best for you. From a dysfunctional Chinese family uprooted to Australia to a classic French novel transposed to Sudan. Here's the incredible story of a father-daughter filmmaking team that put the art in cartoon. Along with the human casualties of the current conflict in Sudan, film has become a dying art. But in the capital cartoon, there's one family that lives for cinema. 87-year-old Gadala Gubara and his daughter Sara have just completed one of the first features made here in years, Le Miserable, the Sudanese version. But they still have to project it against a wall. I started my work over 65 years ago being the first African who used the camera, the cine camera, in the history of Africa. And as if things weren't tough enough, Gadala is blind. In the film, I work as his eyes. Sometimes we argue about some scenes, but still we are cooperate together. The 19th century French novel Les Miserables is about a desperately poor man who commits a minor theft and is punished without compassion. Gadala's Les Mis is a tribute to the enormous struggle of the Sudanese people against injustice and poverty, though it's not explicitly anti-government. Not surprising in a country where freedom of speech is restricted. So this version of Les Mis leaves out the minor detail of the revolution at the end. We are now in the studio, inside the studio Jad, which is my property. Gadala has been directing films for 50 years, making over 30 documentaries and features. He started out shooting 35mm newsreels, following government officials on trips abroad. He was put in charge of the Sudan Film Unit, though it's been disbanded by the current government. 
And in 1998, government soldiers seized his land. They said to me, you must go out of these buildings, the studio. It's the government now, land. And they gave my letter, official letter. When I read the letter, my eyes immediately became black. His condition is called hysterical blindness, sudden loss of vision after a traumatic event. He fought for five years and finally reclaimed his studio, but not his sight. Since he went blind, his studio's fallen into disrepair, his films and equipment left to collect dust. But Gadala is still remembered fondly across Sudan for projecting films in local villages with his mobile cinema. The cinema before 25 years, the screen here, and all the people come to, to see the films. We need mobile cinema to inform the people. But the government does not believe in cinema. So what shall we do? Like father, like daughter, Sarah is determined to keep filmmaking alive in Sudan. I love cinema, and because of my father, I think he's a brave man to be, to own a cinema studio in Sudan. For I don't want this to die. I believe that what must happen will happen. What must happen will happen. And what he's hoping will happen is that Les Miserables will appear at international film festivals and maybe even be shown in Sudan. Well, that's it for this fabulous picture show. We have to say goodbye to Tony Ayers. The people really loved the Q&A. They really loved asking you incredibly personal questions and you had no problem answering them. I've done a few Q&As before and they always end up a bit like Oprah sessions because <laughs> <laughs> so, the film's a personal film and so people want to know, you know who your father was, what happened next. Well, best of luck with the rest of your film career and we hope to see you join us next time on The Fabulous Pictures. You can't have it, you! So how would you rate the film out of 10 and why? Uh, 10 out of 10. Joan Chen, it's her film. I think knowing that it was a true story made it probably more difficult to watch. It was very emotional because it reminded me of kind of the interactions that I have with my brother and sister too. Towards the end, I really, the, the tears were beginning to come and that um, doesn't hit me too often. Mm -hmm.